Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about TradingView and uh, it is because I've gotten a lot of questions about TradingView since it has become my absolute favorite analysis tool when doing technical analysis. So I'm getting a lot of questions and I've tried to collect uh, the answers in one video and that makes my life a lot easier so that every time I get a question I can just uh, send a link to the video. So I hope that in this video we can uh, have a look at some smart small features in TradingView that you uh, weren't aware that existed. So uh, let's get right to it and uh, jump into the platform and uh, as you know this is the basic uh, dashboard when we are working with uh, trading view here i'll just make it a bit smaller here so you can see my menu over here all right um I'm, i'll just take it from the top and the first thing that um, many of you of course have found out is that we can put indicators on our chart that is very neat uh, here we have just a simple uh, price we have uh, an ema as you can see here uh, an EMA and down here we have the MACD indicator. Uh, now if you want some more of the same EMAs here instead of going in and just uh, find it in here and we can search for uh, EMA uh, that is another feature that you might uh, not know existed but we can just search for it here and um, we can search in the buildings and we can find the uh, moving averages I'm at, I think actually it is under that let's just have a look here it is a uh, moving and here is moving average exponential we can do that of course all the time we want to if we want 10 of these EMAs uh, but you can also just click on it you can see now it's marked with small dots and just as you do in a word or Excel document you can just tr uh, press uh, control C for uh, copy and then control V for paste. Now, there's, not, there's still just one line here, but that's because we have copied the EMA with the exact same uh, settings. So up here we have a, uh, a 26 period EMA, and then the next one will also be a 26. So if we wanted a 50 here, we'll just change this to a 50, and we can change the color just to make sure that we can see them right. All right, so you can do this as many times as you like. Of course, there is another problem uh, that quickly occurs here, and that is if we have the free version of TradingView. Because the free version of TradingView, uh, there's a limited number of indicators, and many people want two or three or four uh, moving averages on the chart, and that puts a, a strict limit to uh, how many uh, other indicators they can have down, down here. I'm not a big fan of having a ton of different indicators, but I do understand people that wants to have two, three or four different uh, moving averages uh, and then one or two indicators down here and that uh, quickly becomes a problem. So uh, you can do the thing that you're actually using the uh, pine script down here in the bottom of the chart. Uh, to code your, uh, there's a pine editor down here, so you can actually code your own uh, indicators, but you can do another thing that's a bit smarter, and that is in the um, indicator here, we can uh, just in the public library, and you can search for multiples, uh, multiple EMA, let's just see what comes up here, multiple EMA, uh, let's just see, we'll take this one, uh, 20, 40, 55, uh, so on. And when we put that one on, let's just delete the two we have. You can see that you actually have a bunch of different uh, uh, moving averages now. And the smart thing is that they're only counting as one indicator because it is coded, uh, coded into one indicator. But when we look at the settings here, we can see that there is a number of different uh, moving averages here. Now, maybe you only want three. Uh, you can just uh, take this one off then. Um, maybe you want uh, you don't want 20 and 40 and 55. So let's see if we can find another one. We'll just delete this one and go into indicators. And here we have multiple EMA. Let's just see what that one does. Yes, a lot of different indicators here or moving averages here. And let's just see inputs. Yes, 
uh, we can decide now if we want a, a 20 and a 50, uh, 50 and a 75 or whatever we want to and we can decide what kind of colors we want and now we can see uh, all of them here. So um, there are a number of different possibilities here to put as many uh, EMAs on the chart as you want to and just uh, and just count for one indicator, meaning that you can put several other indicators down here if you want to. Now I do have the paid version and I do recommend that if you are a bit more serious about your investing and analysis of stocks and, and commodities, then you should consider a paid version. But the free version of TradingView is absolutely fantastic uh, as a start uh, when you start off. But uh, it is a good tool and it gets even better with some of the features uh, you get in the paid version. Uh, you can click on the link below in the text here uh, where you can get the free version of uh, TradingView if you don't already have it. All right. Now let's just say that we have built up uh, some sort of, of uh, template here and we want to uh, see something about the MACD. We might want to see if it's actually crossing right now. Uh, and we don't want to slide these up all the time, which can be a bit of a hassle if we have, let's say we had several different indicators in here. Uh, let's just put uh, an RSI on um, here, relative strength index. Now, if for instance, I wanted to have a closer look at the RSI and they were compressed a bit down here, I can't drag it further up there here. I, I have to uh, drag the MACD up first and then the RSI and that's a bit of a hassle. So instead, uh, you can just double click on the RSI down here like this and then you can see the exact uh, score or if it's crossing a, a specific line or something like that. When you want to get back into the standard settings, you just double click again and you are back. All right, let's just get rid of all of this noise for a second because I want to show you something else. Now, a lot of investors and traders are working with support and resistance. And there are different ways you can do that in, uh, in TradingView. First of all, down here I have my favorites and the way that I have built this favorite toolbar is that every time I have found a tool that I really like, uh, let's say it was the anchored WeWAP uh, I wanted to put into the toolbar, I simply just mark this and says add to favorite and it will uh, jump there straight down here and be in my favorite toolbar all the time. So that makes life a bit easier. Now you can of course uh, make, uh, make it with this line. Um, here and um, now when you are drawing a line like this you can double click on it and you can choose uh, different settings here maybe you don't want it to go straight out into infinity to the right uh, that's okay you just remove this line here and then you just have the line where uh, where you draw it um, there are a lot of other things here show midpoint if you're drawing a channel you can uh, extend it to the left, extend it to the right, and so on. Uh, so there are a, a lot of different things in here. You can put in text, and uh, if you want some specific coordinates, yeah, you don't want this uh, to be just an, an any co a coordinate, but you want it to be uh, at exactly uh, 340 here. Let's just see. Here, then uh, it, it's going up to 340 uh, and uh, yeah, some people find that useful. Okay, that is one way to use it. Another way is uh, we have the other tool here, uh, the horizontal ray. That automatically just uh, makes a line, uh, a horizontal line from whatever point you're pushing and then into infinity here. Um, that is another way. Uh, a way I actually have been kind of fond of uh, when I'm using my support and resistance levels because uh, I like more to, to look at areas. There might be some sort of, of bumpy areas uh, area here and I don't, I don't just want a straight line, I want an area. One way you can do that is use this uh, drawing tool. You find it over here uh, with all the other brushes and triangles and so on. But um, I have the, the right, uh, rectangle here and you can just uh, take this one and mark an area. Another way to do it that is uh, qu quite fancy, I think, is to use the parallel channel lines here. 
Um, and let's say, for instance, that this is the uh, place that you think is the support and resistance uh, area. Then let's just make it straight like this. Um, then you can double click on it and you can extend this to the right and the left as well like this and all of a sudden you have a, a, a support and resistance area here you can of course choose uh, the different colors uh, if you want this to be blue instead uh, you just uh, pick blue down here and these two are the lines uh, here you can make these uh, two uh, non-dotted lines uh, here like this uh, and of course you can do all of the stuff that we normally do with these uh, parallel uh, channel here all right if you think that this is simply the right thing for you, then you can, let me just see here, double click on it. And you can save it as a template. Meaning that, let's say for instance, you're working, uh, you are analyzing a stock on several different time frames. Let's say you're looking at a monthly time frame and a weekly and a daily, and you're putting in support and resistance areas for the different time frames. Then it can be quite nice to, uh, know what what sort of resistance you're looking at. So down here, for instance, we can save this as as uh, monthly support and resistance. All right, and we save it, and then whenever you are nice to see here, whenever you want to put in uh, a monthly uh, from a monthly chart, you want to put in a, a resistance area here. You're simply now it, it is this uh, the, the same color that we just made it. But let's say that you also work with a, a red channel and a green channel for the different time frames, and you just wanted to uh, make this one a monthly or a weekly to change it. Then you just go in here and you choose another template. That's how simple it is. So um, this is uh, very useful, and uh, I'm getting more and more used to to use it like this. All right, let's just delete these again, like here. Now, um, a couple of other tips and tricks I have here, and that is also based on uh, many of the questions I'm getting. Uh, now, when I'm setting up my chart, I am basically, basically just looking for a, a white uh, background like this. But you can always change everything about TradingView, and that's what I love about it. It is simply so flexible. So if you right click here on your chart somewhere, um, and you go down to settings, then you can adjust pretty much anything here. Right now we have the, the candlesticks. I can change the colors for uh, if I want blue colors or black candlesticks, uh, whatever I want to. Um, adjusting data for dividends. Uh, I haven't had much success with that, I must admit. It doesn't change much on mine here. Um, time zone it can be useful if you are living in some uh, obscure part of the world here. Um, there are some other things you can do down here. If you want some more information up here. Now, I like my screen quite clean, but um, you can put a lot of different information here. Open, high, low, uh, low, close values here. Uh, you can put different uh, text on. You can put, uh, you can, you can uh, change the background if you want the, the black chart. Sorry, the black chart. Uh, some people uh, really like the black chart uh, uh, as a background. Uh, then you can change it here. Uh, you can choose uh, session breaks and so on and so forth. You can change pretty much anything uh, in here. So that is one thing uh, to, to set up. And of course, you can also uh, always uh, save it as uh, uh, your, your standard template. Another thing is that and uh, the scale over here, not all users uh, are aware that you can actually uh, change that one. Um, when you click this one, you can, um, I, I suggest that you mark this one, auto fits data to screen. Because if you're working with very volatile uh, stocks, for instance, and you're going back in time, all of a sudden you can lose track of uh, where is uh, the stock price right now because it is simply moving so much so that when you're going back in time, uh, all of a sudden the price disappeared. Well, first of all, you can always right click here and then just reset price scale like this and you're back and you can see your, your, your price here. But I recommend that you right click here and then choose auto fits data to screen because that makes sure that no matter how far you go back, it always fits the, the current data 
uh, into the screen here and uh, that is uh, very helpful now uh, sometimes I get a question uh, where people say that their channels for instance are getting a bit funny looking and often you see normal this is uh, the normal chart I'm not sure if we can uh, do it here but let's say for instance that we have made a uh, channel here and um, all of a sudden it looks a bit funny now it, it doesn't look too funny here but sometimes it gets skewed a bit and looks a bit more like a cone or something and that is simply because you have uh, accidentally sh uh, shifted into logarithmic scale now logarithmic scale can be very useful when for instance we are looking at a uh, let's just have a look at uh, bitcoin in dollars now when we're looking at bitcoin uh, it can seem extremely volatile let's just have a look at a uh, weekly chart here let's just see one week here it is now let's say for instance we were looking at uh, bitcoin here and you can see that uh, the the movements down here even though them there might be a lot of percentage movement we almost can't see it because this movement is simply taking up all the the room and that's because we are using a linear scale where we have the same jump every single time you can see from zero to two thousand to four thousand to six to eight to ten but as you know the movement from thousand to two thousand that's a hundred percent move but a move from seventeen thousand to eighteen thousand is not a hundred percent move so uh, it is the same in dollars but not in percentages so what we can do when we are looking at a, a an extreme chart like this is that we can right click here and then we can choose the logarithmic scale and now we are looking at the exact same price development here but now you can see that the prices out here are somewhat different because what we're looking at now is that the range let's just have a look at it the range here from 400 to 600 dollars that is a 50% change here uh, that is uh, pretty much the same as uh, from 900 to uh, let's just say uh, 1350 uh, which is also 50% and it should be the same as from 3000 to 4500 which is also 50% so now the dollar amount uh, goes up quickly but now it measures it in the same percentage move every single time. So when you're looking at something that is extremely uh, parabolic in movement, then it can be a very good thing to shift to logarithmic scale. Just remember to shift back because the regular scale, in my opinion, is way better when you're just uh, looking at uh, just simple normal stocks that moves pretty linear in there and i know apple is quite uh, hefty here but uh when you're looking at just normal stocks i think that the regular scale uh, will will fit uh, nicely all right that's it for today uh I'll, I'll get back soon with more tips and tricks for trading view view but i hope that in this video you found something that you didn't know already and that you can use in your daily work with analysis we want to make analysis as easy as possible and to do that we need to know our toolbox and in this case it is trading view if you haven't done already remember to, to uh, hit that subscribe and like button down there and remember that, that there is a link to trading view below in the text it is an affiliate link so if you use it and if for some reason you one day should choose to have the paid version then uh, i'll get a bit of support out of that all right, that's all for now. Take care of yourself and your money out there. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.